Welcome to Fresh Bread for today. Hi, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm glad that you are sitting there with your paper, your pen, and your Bible. I know you are because we're going to cover a lot of information today that I think will be encouraging, will be um, glorifying to the Lord, and I think also some insight into um, the lives of the d disciples and the apostles that we haven't thought about in a long time, or at least I hadn't. This teaching came about a few weeks ago when I was asked to minister at my local church, and um, I had prepared, I thought, another teaching, which that reminds me I have another one, um, but um, I got ready, and about 45 minutes before I left for church, the Lord said, go, go get the notes, download the notes that you have about the death of the apostles and disciples, and I thought, oh, wow, Lord, okay, and I thought, I'll do that, okay, when I get back from church or tomorrow, and he said, go do it now, and I went, oh, I got 45 minutes, you know how you argue with the Lord and thinking our time is so important. Uh, and our agenda and our plans. But anyway, so I went ahead and went and downloaded the um, the uh, notes. And, and so I'm reading through them. And I and so he said, take them with you. And I thought, oh, boy. Okay, so I got to church and didn't know how in the world this was in, 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 in the world. It wasn't going to happen. But I didn't know how the Lord was going to pull it together with what I was going to teach and, and how was I going to incorporate this. And yet the Holy Spirit did, and it was amazing. And probably one of the most powerful messages that I had uh, ministered in a long time, and a lot of uh, things happened in the people's hearts that night, and several just, you know, fell on their face before the Lord and just said, you know, I, I had to change, and I love you, Lord, and I'm going to make the, uh, the adjustments in my life that I needed uh, to make, and, you know, Anyway, lots of testimonies about what I went on that night, and there was just a real um, an anointing on this that I did not expect because I only had 45 minutes to get it ready, but that's the way the Holy Spirit says. Don't give any thought of what you're going to say because I'm going to give you the words. Anyway, amazing. So today I had, like I said, I was going to do calling to me, and the Lord said, no, nope. I want you to share with the people today that's going to be watching this program uh, about the death of the disciples and the apostles. And I went, wow, okay. So we're going to jump in. We're first going to read from uh, Revelations 12, verse 11, where it says, And they uh, overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. Isn't that awesome? Um, so the name of this might be Love Your Life Not Unto Death. Another thing that I think about in a little bit when we talk about Peter, we're going to talk about how um, he was told by Jesus before uh, Jesus left the earth that he was going to be, you know, when he was young, he was able to go this way, but when he's old, somebody's going to take a hold of him and guard him and lead him into places that he did not wish to go. And I believe that a lot of us are finding ourselves in the place of our lives that we didn't really think we would be here. Um, I think some of us didn't think our ministry would go in the direction that it's gone. And for me, I know that mine has, um, I sense, intensified with the, the uh, prophetic anointing, I believe, more so from a prophet's stance than just from evangelistic or pastoral. And I believe that today what I have to say um, is coming from a very prophetic edge to encourage us to not love our life unto death. We don't know what's coming tomorrow. I know that I live here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and we just had the Ebola cases, and I know there's been a few um, in other areas of the United States, and we certainly know about West Africa. And so there is that um, that concern about a plague and an outbreak of, of Ebola and other pestilence. And even though Matthew 25 talks to us and tells us, and Jesus tells us that those things are going to be happening even more so in the last day, we, we're not moved by that. We have to stay focused, people. We have to stay focused as the people of God as to what he's doing and what he's planning. And I know that he's got plans of good and that he has a purpose and that he's got a destination for us to reach in the spirit, each one of us, and we can't be moved by what's going on. But we also need to be educated and informed and enlightened by the Word 
and uh, the revelation that he's given to us about these end times. And we all, I believe, must come to a place where we do not love our life unto death. We've got the, you know, understanding that we've overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony, uh, but we don't much emphasize and did not and will not love our life unto death. So here we go. We're going to dive in and learn a few things. Some of you may already know this. Some of you may have never uh, had the opportunity to study how the apostles died. We're going to talk uh, first about uh, the apostle Peter. Even though we don't have biblical um, references necessarily to the death of uh, the disciples, I believe that we have historical and uh, secular writings of that time that tell us how these uh these men died and so uh with peter we know that he was in rome at the time of his crucifixion they i'm sure he was there doing uh what jesus said to do which we call the great commission which was preaching the gospel to the whole world and i believe that it was during this time that he upset so many people that they they came after him and the enemy is always coming after us, but we don't have to fear and we don't have to come into a place that we, we run and we hide ourselves uh, away from the Lord and, uh, and away from um, the attacks of the enemy. I think we face things head on with the power of the Holy Ghost, with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we get to the place that we will not love our life unto death, be it whenever. I mean, we know that we're all going to die. I, I've said this before in other teachings, but until we get that into our spirit that it doesn't matter if Christ is coming back and we ca get caught up in the air or we remain on the earth and live out a very natural life, it doesn't matter. We have to not be so wrapped up in ourselves that we would be afraid to do anything for Christ in fear of persecution or even death. And that's what I believe this whole teaching today is about. Not loving your life more than you love Jesus Christ. Not loving the safety of your hidden away, away from the world and, and from uh, attacks of the enemy, but loving Christ and following him wherever he says to go and do whatever he says to do. So as we, you know, are talking here about Peter, he, he just didn't even believe that he deserved to be hung in the same fashion and manner that Jesus did. He didn't believe that he should be, he wasn't worthy enough to be hung upside right. He decided and asked and requested to be hung upside down. Isn't that amazing? And even in John uh, verse uh, chapter 21, let's go there right quick. And uh, let's look at how it was um, prophesied to him through Jesus. I believe Jesus was prophetically speaking to him. Again, I'm trying to find uh, John 21. I had it marked and moved it. Um, even Jesus was preparing John ahead of time of, of uh, his life and, and that it wasn't going to be exactly like John thought it was going to be. I don't know if John thought that they were going to spend a lot of time just healing the sick and preaching the gospel and the kingdom and that there wasn't going to be a lot of persecution and that there wasn't going to be a risk of uh, prison and being stoned and crucified and all that. Uh, maybe deep down in his spirit, man, he knew that. But anyway, so Jesus had just asked uh, Peter. He said, you know, Peter, I just want to know, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, yes. And then Jesus asked him again. And, and Peter was so upset, thinking, oh, my gosh, Lord. And, and Jesus said, you know, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. And then on the third time, he asked Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. And then Jesus said again, feed my sheep. And I think that's the message the Lord is saying to us today. The question is, do you love me? Sue, do you love me? Robert, do you love me? Allison, do you love me? I can hear by the Spirit the Lord calling our name right now, calling you by name and asking you, do you love me? Because he's got something for you to do. And you're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And you won't love your life unto death. But as we look back here in John 21, verse 18, this is where I believe Jesus were, <clears throat> excuse me, was prophesying to Peter. He said, Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. 
And I believe at times that there's a place that the Lord is going to take you. And I know there's been places that the Lord has taken me that I did not wish to go. But I went because I was following after him and being obedient. And it turned, it turned out to be some of the best times in the Lord that I ever experienced. You know, I've shared with you about being in Afghanistan and how the Lord just supernaturally did amazing things. Uh, <clears throat> that really wasn't my wish to be in Afghanistan, staying in an army tent uh, with incoming missiles and all kinds of stuff going on. That wasn't my wish. Uh, been in the uh, rainforest of uh, Suriname and uh, places in Peru that wasn't really, you know, in the natural, my wish to be there, but by my heart's desire and by the will of the Lord and following Him, I chose to go to those places and so many other places that I have been incredibly blessed to have gone. But I had to acquire the attitude and the determination that when Jesus said, Jan, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. And I went. And then he said that there's times that you're going to have to risk your life, not knowing if you're going to come back alive or not. And I had to trust the Lord. By faith, I was coming back. But in my heart and in my spirit, man, I had to understand that even if I didn't, I wasn't going to love my life unto death. I was going to declare the goodness of the Lord. I was going to testify the blood and the power that came through Jesus Christ. I was going and still going to give the testimony of Jesus Christ and share the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. And I'm grateful for that. So, you know, Peter wasn't sure what Jesus was saying at that time when he said, you know, when you were young, you kind of went when you wanted to, and you went when you wanted to, but he said, there's a day coming that you're not going to have that freedom and liberty to do only what you want. And I believe that now the body of Christ is being called into that place that we can't just be willy-nilly about the things of the Lord. I believe the greatest persecution the church has ever known has come and hit in our day and time, we see the beheadings and all the killings that are going on in the Middle East in the name of ISIL. We see the um, rapes and murder of the children. It, it's horrific what's going on, but I'm not going to be moved by those bad reports. I'm going to declare the power of the blood of Jesus and the word of his testimony that Jesus Christ is here to save, redeem, change the world, change everybody's life, and that um, I'm called to the Great Commission, and I'm not going to love my life unto death. So as we move on and we read a little bit more, let's talk about uh, the Apostle Andrew. Now, um, the Apostle Andrew was uh, doing the, the work of the ministry. He was there in Greece uh, again accomplishing and setting out to do the Great Commission of going into all the world. And it was there in Greece that he was actually hung on a cross that was kind of like an X uh, because I don't even know really why he, he ended up that way, but that's the way he was crucified. And um, I want to read a little bit uh, from what I found about Andrew. And um, let me just read it. It says, And it is believed that while he hung on the cross and was dying, he called to the crowd and taught them about Jesus Christ and how they might be saved. Thus he was sharing the gospel up until the very time of his death on the X-shaped cross, being loyal to the end. Isn't that awesome? Here he is in the midst of torture. Here he is being crucified on an X-shaped cross, still crying out to the crowd that was there to watch the crucifixion, still sharing the gospel, still shouting out, Jesus saves. Jesus gives you eternal life if you believe in him. I mean, to the very end, Andrew was preaching the gospel, even up until the point of his death. That is amazing. And can you imagine the power, the dunamis power that was going on inside of him that the Holy Spirit just exploded, even in the midst of the pain and the torture, the words that came out about the blood of the Lamb and about the testimony of the Lamb and how he continued to preach the gospel to the very end. Hallelujah. 
That's what I want to be doing to the very end. Whether I die through persecution, I die a natural death, it doesn't matter. But what matters, I want to be found with faith and I want to be found by Jesus Christ preaching the gospel to the very end. I just, I think that story about Andrew is amazing, just amazing, amazing. Okay, let's read a little bit about uh, Matthew. Matthew became a missionary and was arrested in Ethiopia. It was there that he was staked to the earth or to the ground by spears and then beheaded. I mean, here he is in Ethiopia, in Africa, preaching the gospel. And they are, the enemy is so upset that he causes the people to come and stake him to the ground with spears. And then they whacked off his head. He was beheaded. So for us to be hearing about what's going on in the Middle East and even what happened recently in Oklahoma with that woman being beheaded in the name of Allah is just, it's happening right now. And yet that could strike fear in our heart. But no, let it strike faith. Let faith arise. And let God arise and his enemy be scattered. Let us not hide and, and be fearful and tremble. But let us work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Knowing that God's bringing all things together. And that we were born for this time. And we are here for a reason. And it's to preach the gospel. So when I read about... Um, about this, I am amazed, absolutely amazed at what happened to the life of uh, Andrew. And I'm amazed about the life of what happened to Matthew when he was crucified um, and, you know, his head cut off. I mean, these testimonies of Peter and Andrew and Matthew should not be emphasizing the death, but the glorious message that they were willing to die for. And the message isn't just a message. It's about Jesus Christ, the living Lord, the Savior of the world, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one that's coming again. Hallelujah. They thought him worthy to die, but they didn't just die. They went out with a shout of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the return of Christ was coming again and they wanted the people to know and they did not love their life unto death. Now let's move on. Now that we talked about Matthew, let's talk about Nathaniel, otherwise known as Bartholomew. He was in Armenia, which is the Asia Minor, minor and uh, it was apparent that he became uh, a missionary there and he was actually whipped to death literally torn to shred by these whips similar probably to jesus see the enemy keeps trying to do the same thing over and over and over because he can't come up with any new ideas so he chose to take bartholomew out by beating him with a whip and um, shredding his flesh and it had to be agonizing but still bartholomew was in armenia in the asia minor preaching the gospel when they took him and decided to take him out but he overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of jesus testimony and he did not love his life unto death he wasn't he wasn't like begging for his life he stood in the power of the Holy Ghost, just like Stephen when he was stoned. And he, Stephen looked up and he said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Same thing Jesus said. I mean, that uh, you can only do that in the power of the Holy Ghost with the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. We can't say those things if we don't know who he is. That's how we have, we have the power in the midst of a trial or tribulation or persecution or even facing death, whether it's facing cancer that's eating your body or, or whatever. It's when we look into the face of the enemy and we say, Jesus, Jesus was worth me living and Jesus is worth me dying and I will not get off the truth and the reality of the King of Kings. No, not happening. Okay, 
So let's move on. We're going to read a little bit about Thomas and how he died. Uh, Thomas was in India when he was executed. He was a missionary there, and he had uh, established a church. And they decided that they would stab him with spears, constant stabbing with spears, and it was the wounds that actually killed him. But they were, they were out to assassinate him, so they chose to use spears, and they speared him. And it was the infection and the oozing and the death of the, the wounds that he died from because of the gospel. And yet he chose to be in India as a missionary. As a missionary. Isn't that awesome? That he didn't, you know, abandon the call on his life when Jesus, you know, went to heaven. He didn't uh, denounce the name of Jesus. Uh, he didn't deny or quench the Holy Spirit because he was in the upper room and had received the infilling of the Holy Ghost, which gave him power to go through the things that he did. Uh, just like us. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the blood. And thank God for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Because we know that the testimony of Jesus Christ is prophecy. So we're prophesying that Jesus was here. He came, He died, He rose again, and He's coming back. We're prophesying and testifying to the truth of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to move on and we're going to talk about uh, how the Apostle Philip died. This was really probably horrific too because Philip decided to, to be uh, put into shackles upside down. He didn't, um, you know, he didn't want to be hung upside right either. And they put, they put iron uh, hooks onto his ankles and put him upside down and that's how he died. He was hung upside down, but he went out again, I'm sure, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and the soon return of Jesus. And he looked death in the eye and said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. And that death would not have power over him. And it was because of the, that Jesus came and, was, and he manifested his, manifested his power over the enemy. That was his purpose to show us that the enemy has no hold on our spirit and our soul. And even though this body will decay and die and, and, and go into the grave if we don't see the return of Christ and get caught up in the air, doesn't matter. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. Nothing. No distance, no height, angels, and devils, nothing will separate us. And I believe Philip went out knowing that he was not separated from God just because he was about to die. He knew he was about to see him again, and he was going to be in the presence of the Lord. That's why Paul said to die is gain, but it's needful for me to stay here. We're staying here at this time because it's needful for us to be here to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. To tell people the good news when bad news is going on all over the world. Oh yeah, but we've got the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're going to move on and we're going to talk about um, the Apostle Jude. We know that he was crucified in Persia on a mission trip there, and it was the Magi that decided to take him out. Um, it, he was crucified. It doesn't tell us, I guess, just in normal fashion, but, you know, nonetheless, he was, again, I emphasize in Persia, on a mission trip, bringing the good news, being empowered by the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel into the very point of the crucifixion of his life where he died and entered into the arms of Jesus Christ, not screaming, but going out with full assurance of who Jesus is and that he was going to be with him again that day. Hallelujah. Okay, let's talk about the Apostle James, the son of Zebedee. Um, the Apostle James is not the same James as the brother of James. So we need to kind of establish that. And um, we also find from reliable historical writers and from church historians that uh, it's thought that he was beheaded by King Herod near Palestine. Palestine and Palestine that's over here in Texas but in Palestine Palestine I'll get it right here um, and not far from where uh, a, he was doing a local um, missionary work to the Jews in Judea 
Now here he is, the Apostle James, not the brother of Jesus, but the Apostle James, and here he is preaching to the Jews in Judea. And King Herod find, found out he was there and decided that he'd behead him. But I love that he didn't run away from the call on his life. He knew full, full well that Herod wasn't a supporter of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He knew he was not in support of Jesus being king of kings. He, you know, James knew that there was a chance that he'd die right there in Judea on his mission trip to preach the gospel to the Jews, and yet he risked his life and did not love his life unto death, and he went, and there he was beheaded. I mean, how unfortunate that he lost his head, but it's because he had given his heart to Jesus that his head didn't matter, and that's where we have to come here that we have the mind of Christ and we think the thoughts of what God says, but when we think carnally, we let our heart bring in, I mean, our head bring into our heart, into our, our mouth, words of fear. But when we set aside the carnality of our thinking and we come in with the wisdom of God and we let our heart speak forth the, the gospel and the truth, then we will preach no matter at whatever risk it is to get people saved and brought into the kingdom. And that's what it's about, people. We have neighbors, we have friends. I know I say this almost every time I preach, but I cannot emphasize it enough that if people die today, no matter how they die, whether it's through persecution, execution, assassinations, being read over by a car, being shot by a drive-by shooter. It doesn't matter if they don't know Jesus, if they're taken out with cancer or some other horrendous uh, physical ailment. Does it matter how they go? It matters if they go into the everlasting arms of Jesus or are they slipping off into hell? That's what matters. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we find where our Judea is. That's why we find where our Samaria is. That's why many of us go to the uttermost parts of the world and the earth to preach Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what we do because that's who we are in Him, not in ourselves. And we won't let our heads tell our heart what we're going to do. We're going to let the Holy Spirit guide us. And we're going to follow on to follow Jesus. Right? Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Because we all got a Samaria and we've all got a Judea. And it might be your little neighborhood. It could be your, your county. It could be your state. It could be your nation. It could be multiple nations. But look, folks, get ready and go. Follow him. Hallelujah. Follow him. And don't fear. Get in faith. Preach the gospel. You get killed, so what? To die is gain. You're going to be with Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not volunteering, but I'm not walking in, out in front of 18-wheeler either just to test, you know, the Lord. It's just, no, don't do that. But I will go where the Lord says to go in Jesus' name. Okay, so now we're going to go on and we're going to talk about, um, let's talk about Mathis. Mathis is the one that replaced um, Judas, when he hung himself, and we know, we, I don't have to tell you the story about that, because his whole rejection of Christ and betrayal, and, um, I mean, he was a traitor. So tragic, so tragic, and he walked with him all that time, sitting with the 12 disciples. That's just amazing, but, you know, we, we do crazy stuff, too, when we're not in the Spirit. But anyway, so Mathis was um, also stoned. Yeah, he was stoned, I'm sure, for preaching the gospel. He was stoned, and then after they stoned him, they cut off his head in the, 20, in the first century. And in the 21st century, here we are hearing about people having their heads cut off because they're Christians. They're being beheaded, but we read in Revelations that we knew that was coming. We've always had a church that was persecuted. So why do we act surprised that we're going to experience it in our lifetime? probably in horrific ways. Eh, okay. It'll be worth it. Jesus is worth everything that you might think you will experience, good or bad. He's worth it. He's worth the good and he's worth the bad experiences. Hallelujah, for the gospel's sake. I just can't encourage you enough. 
to go for Christ, follow him. All right, all right, let me get back to the teaching here. Okay, how the apostle John died. This is the disciple uh, whom Jesus loved and was the one that died, uh, and the only one that died of a natural death. That is by old age and not being mortared or, you know, taken out. However, he was imprisoned on the island of Patmos where he wrote the book of Revelation. He was later freed and went to Turkey. And he wrote, um, and he established churches there. Isn't that awesome? You know, he wrote Revelation while he was on the island, and then he gets out and he goes to Turkey, and then he just begins to establish churches. Again, the Great Commission. Not loving his life unto death, just risking it all right there in Turkey, going out preaching the gospel. And this is what is said. This is the apostle, apostle that is mentioned in John 21, 20, 23. Then Peter turned around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, who is the one who portrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remains till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. I love this because what, what was going on here is that John was all nosy and up in the business of Jesus. You know, all about what was going to happen to um, uh, Peter and what was going to happen to himself. And, and um, you know, he thought that Jesus was, John thought Jesus was saying that Peter wasn't going to die a natural death and that he was probably going to be here when he came back. But that wasn't true. I mean, that wasn't true. It was saying that, um, th then this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die, yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? When you have questions about other people and what they're doing or not doing, Jesus said, uh, what's that to you? Now we're, you know, we're to um, be able to recognize the freedom people's life and, and we have to be careful with who we hang out. And, you know, so there's, you know, there's other scriptures that go with that. But as far as who's doing what and who's going to the mission field and who's not staying and blah, 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 and all that stuff. It, it's not any of our business. If we'll just fulfill the Great Commission in our life, if we'll just follow on to know Jesus and we tell everybody that we know about Jesus, then that's all that matters. It's, it, it doesn't matter who's going to be here when Christ comes back. You know? I may die after death. I may get to see Jesus in the air. I don't know. That's not... I'm not concerned about that. I'm only focusing on today because this is the only day I have. I don't know about tomorrow. Yesterday's gone. So what am I going to do about today? That's what you need to be doing. What are you going to do about today? Who are you going to preach to? Where's your Judea? Where's your Samaria? Where's your uttermost end of the earth? What are you doing? Don't be worried about what Susie Q is doing or Joe, uh, Joe Bob down the road. It doesn't matter. That's what Jesus was saying. What's it to you? Just follow me. Jesus says, follow me. Okay, let's go on. How the Apostle James, the less, the less, the James that was known as the less James. And that's, um, you know, that's not the uh, brother, half-brother of Jesus. Uh, he, this uh, James was thrown from the pinnacle of the temple. And once he survived it, they went down and they beat him to death because he actually fell, survived the fall. I'm sure they kicked him off, threw him off, pushed him off, or whatever they did. He survived the fall and went down and beat the tar out of him. I mean, you know, the enemy can't stand it that we are talking about the good news. He couldn't stand it that James the Less was still preaching the good news and would not deny him. And I think probably I kind of had a little picture of what could have been going on with him and, you know, uh, and others. And we'll talk a little bit again about somebody that something similar happened to. Um, I'm sure when they were up on the top of the, uh, the temple that Satan was doing to them, taunting them just like he did Jesus whenever he was saying, no, throw yourself down. I mean, the angels are going to take care of you. If you dash your foot against the stone, no big deal. They're going to come. They'll fix you. And uh, I'm sure that worst kind of um, taunting and tormenting uh, stupidity words came out of the mouth of those uh, people at that time, uh, being actually um, encouraged by Satan himself. And yet, this James didn't love his life unto death. 
And I'm sure they were after him because he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, let's see. We know what G uh, Judas did to himself. Now let's talk about James, the brother of Jesus. I know this is going on for a while, but I think it's so interesting and needful for us to be reminded of, um, of our forefathers in the faith. Um, okay. Anyway, so James, the brother of Jesus, was also thrown off uh, a hundred foot wall. He survived the fall and they did the same thing to him because he refused to deny Jesus. He could have said, Jesus was my brother, man. I don't know what that dude was doing, but he didn't choose to do that. He knew that he wasn't just his half-brother, but that he was his Lord and Savior. And they knew he knew, and he knows they knew that he was preaching the gospel, and it just tore them up to the point that they were pushed by a spirit of murder to kill James, the brother of Jesus. Yeah. There's a spirit of murder and a, a spirit of death would try to come to us, but in Jesus' name, we keep on. We keep on with the power of the Holy Spirit. We keep on with the blood of the Lamb and the word of His testimony, and we remember that we will not love our life unto death. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's talk about Apostle John. I'm going to read you this section because we're almost done with this teaching today, uh, but I thought it was very important to go ahead and share about uh, the Apostle Paul. So I'm going to read it. It says, I include Paul among the apostles since he was perhaps the greatest apostle and evangelist the world has ever known and most certainly deserves to be included with the disciples. Uh, Second Timothy was the last letter ever written by Paul and in it he knew that the time of his death drew near as he wrote to Timothy. And he says to Timothy, For I am already poured out like a drink offering and the time of my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. You can hear the passion and the love uh, of Paul and his last words to Timothy. I mean, I love this part because he says, you know, I know it's about time that I'm going. I know my death is near. He said, but I'm going to be able to be given the crown of righteousness from the Lord, which at some point in time, I'm sure he laid it at Jesus' feet. And he said that it's not just a, a crown that I'm going to get, but it's going to also be given to those that long for the appearing of Jesus. Are you longing for the appearing of Jesus? Are you hanging on to the world and what the little bit that the world has to offer? Everything that's up, it's down now. Everything that goes sideways has gone opposite of where it's supposed to go. From the economy to the government to the medical community to the judicial. I mean, everything is upside down. Good is evil. Evil is good. You know, right's wrong. Wrong's right. I mean, it's crazy what's going on. But we're not moved by that. We're moved because we are we are longing for the appearance of Jesus Christ and his return, hallelujah. And just think someday, because you're excited about the return of Christ and he's coming again, you're going to have a crown of life that you're going to be able to lay down at his feet, at his holy presence. We're going to be able to lay crowns at his feet because he's so worthy, hallelujah. And it goes on and says that he went from prison knowing that his execution was near. Probably Christ himself must have told him, and he was preparing Timothy to take over for him. Timothy was probably being groomed to take the place of Paul in so many ways, uh, if that's possible. Anyway, listen to the heartbreaking last words of Paul as he waited his execution in 2 Timothy 4, verse 16 through 18. I'm going to read it to you. At my first defense, no one came to my support. But everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Now that's what Paul was writing in Timothy 2, chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Paul was abandoned by everyone as his execution neared. All that is except he wasn't abandoned by his Lord Jesus Christ. And you won't be either. I won't be either when it comes to the end. And it says Paul was not ashamed how he lived his life as his death drew near. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no shame in our game that we preach the gospel. No shame. Most historians, both secular and church, say that he was beheaded. His last thoughts must have been of his beloved Lord, knowing that since he rescued him from eternal death by saving him, he would rescue him after his physical death and would be with the Lord forever. Hallelujah. So the suffering and the affliction of this time are but for seconds and minute into the reality that eternity will know no pain. We won't have tears and we'll be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So as I finish this, I'm excited that the Lord's reminded us that be, whether we're in death or not, we are always in his presence, always having his strength, always overcoming the enemy, and that we get to choose. You don't have to, but you get to choose if you're going to love your life unto death. I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to not be caught up in your physical world and in the flesh of your body. Don't be so concerned about tomorrow or what's going to happen with the world situations. Be caught up in Jesus. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Word of God, declaring the power of the blood, declaring His testimonies, preaching the gospel to the uttermost end of the earth and not loving your life even unto death. Until we see each other again, either here by video or in the air, and I hope it's in the air soon. I can't wait to see Jesus. Until then, be blessed.